Hello and welcome to Travel Lab. This episode, we come to the kingdom of the elephants. It's Thailand, a country of incredible diversified culture and the people of incredible subtleness and gentleness. Can you believe it? I'm riding on an elephant. The Thai people simply love their elephants, the Asian elephants. And when you've been in the country a while, you'll probably develop the same affection for these huge, gentle creatures. The complexity of their nature, so benign yet so powerful, embodies the qualities of the national religion, Buddhism. Nearly everyone here is Buddhist. And that might explain the tolerance and inner peace you see on all of the faces here. We start our journey from Bangkok, the throbbing metropolis of central Thailand. From Bangkok, we head north to the ancient city of Chiang Mai, and from there, we turn south to the renowned beach resort Phuket. By all accounts, Thailand is a true paradise for travelers. But I don't think paradise is the most accurate word to describe it. It's nirvana that best conveys the spirit of the land here. The very word Thai means free. So welcome to Thailand, where the people call their home a land of freedom. Ayutthaya, less than one hour drive north Bangkok, is usually the first call for many visitors who come to see its beautiful temple ruins. Its Buddha statuary dates back to the classic period when Thailand was known as Siam. Founded in the 14th century, Ayutthaya was the capital for over 400 years, serving as a commercial and trade center. Built on the banks of the Chao Phraya River, the city was designed in genuine Thai style as an island city surrounded by water, with crisscrossing canals that served as the main streets. We are going to visit the city in Buddha. It's the biggest one around Ayutthaya. But first, you have to take off your shoes. Once inside the temple, you'll immediately appreciate the cool atmosphere after the scorching sun outside. Wat Pan Nan Chuan was built two decades before the establishment of the Yutia. The gilded Buddha is 19 meters high, even in a sitting posture. I was just in time to witness the everyday ritual draping the monk's saffron colored cloth over the Buddha statue's shoulder. Pious followers offer the bright colored cloth with great respect to the Buddha. After the robes are extended over the heads of everyone down below to symbolize the sharing of the divine blessing, people stand up silently and walk clockwise around the statue. The ritual is repeated over and over as new groups arrive. religion is so deep-rooted that you find Buddhist influences in many pieces of classic Thai music. Taking a ride on an elephant in the ancient Thai capital of Ayutthaya makes you feel a bit as if you are a member of the royal family taking a ride through the royal residence. The only problem is that it's a little bit too slow. The day has started to darken by the time we get to the oldest temple of Yutaya. This is Wat Prasi Sampat, 
where the first royal palace was built. In the mid 14th century, King Wu Tong made Ayutthaya his capital and built the royal palace here. It had five principal pavilions, all of them probably wood constructions. When most of it was destroyed by fire in the year 1440, a new grand palace was built in the north and the old palace was converted into a religious house. Nowadays, people still come over here to pay their respects and ask for blessings. Somehow, for me, ruins always have more charm. The passing of time and the natural caress from the rain and the sun endow the architecture with a special glow that no human hand can render. Back in today's Thai capital of Bangkok, all the liveliness and dynamism of the Thai people swings back. The sprawling city now has a sky train to deal with its notorious traffic problems. But the traditional tactic, the motor cars that whiz you to any corner of the metropolis in the fastest fashion, still rush around the city like crazy. Around every corner, you will find food stands offering all kinds of local delicacies. It seems the city offers temptation and excitement at every moment. From Bangkok, which was built on the plain, I head for the hilly mountains in the north on my way to Chiang Mai to dive even deeper into the mysteries and marvels of Thailand. Elephants represent power in Thailand. And in Mesa elephant training camp here in Chiang Mai, you never know those powerful animals can be so tame. The show has already started. <laughs> the elephant show is a seamless display of cooperation between the elephants and their trainers, who are called mahout. It's quite amazing to watch these intelligent animals engage in some very human games. Sometimes with a nimble grace that's quite startling when you consider their enormous bulk. A gentle imitation of the famous bone-bruising Thai massage takes your breath away when you think of the weight of the animal and its potential strength. Try your wildest guess on their intelligence. They can even paint. At first, it was not easy to teach them. They couldn't get the hand of holding the brush. But eventually, some went on to develop their own style. This one is consistent with the dotting of the Impressionists. While the others are engaged in work that's a little bit less abstract. I am not sure the elephants can see the picture as well as we do because they have poor vision. And I'm not sure how they feel about them. Perhaps they prefer music work. Elephants have poor vision but excellent hearing, better than human beings, thanks to their amplified ears. Elephants are affectionately featured in many Thai myths and legends, and Thai people have a long history of training and working with the elephants. They help them pull the logs in the jungle. 
But right now, there are less than 5,000 elephants in Thailand. And the Mesa Elephant Camp is one of the many projects established to save the precious animal, which is the symbol of Thai nation. The nursery is where the young elephants are kept. Here we find a five-month-old hanging around his mother. You can feel that the skin of the little elephant is still soft and thin. Of all the creatures, none mirrors the life term of man like the elephant. They generally live to the ripe old age of 70 and mature in a very similar way to human beings. There is just one major difference. An elephant pregnancy lasts for nearly two years before the baby arrives. Imagine! Each elephant has its own mahout or keeper. The mahout usually lives in a small hut next to his elephant and they develop a very close relationship. <laughs> My first kiss with an elephant. She's so kind. Thank you. Precious Nopi. Oh. Okay, okay, then. <laughs> Mr. D, the mahout of six-year-old Fu Moon, says the relationship between he and Fu Moon is like father and a naughty daughter. I do see a perfect picture of love and trust when the two walked slowly away into the rain through that emerald green grass. Chiang Mai was the ancient capital of the Lana dynasty in northern Thailand in the 13th century, and Wat Du Sik Dat Temple, often referred to as the Golden Pagoda, is the symbol of the old city. The temple is perched on a small mountain overlooking Chiang Mai city. A relic of the Buddha has been carefully preserved here. It's believed to be the shoulder bone of Buddha and thus gives the temple extreme prestige. Many followers have donated small belts with their names inscribed on them to be hung along the roofs. And believers whose prayers have been answered have donated many of the statues. quite at peace here and since everybody else is speaking softly and the tradition here goes that you can make a wish here and walk around the golden pagoda three times and your wish will come true From the multifaceted gold and green Chiang Mai, we head far south to the popular seaside resort Phuket. The spectacular beach and the breathtaking tropical coastal scenery lure countless travelers each year. The grand view looking toward the Andaman Sea is quite a contrast with the delicate subtlety you experience of the Thai culture inland. The rainy season in Thailand is between May and October. If you come during the dry season, you are very likely to witness a magnificent sunset over the sea. At night, 
night, it really comes to life along the seashore. Bars, restaurants, coffee shops, and interesting little stalls are strung along the coast to provide visitors with lots of diversion. It's tempting to kick back to enjoy a cool night among a group of merry strangers, just a stone's throw away from the waves. But if you have only one night to spare here, I suggest you go to at least one show before you venture into the bar scene. The Phuket Fantasy Show is staged in the Phuket Fantasy Theme Park every night except Thursday. Before the show begins, you can enjoy a moment of shopping outside the theater. All of the novelties here are related to the show, which tells the story of Kamala Prince and his loyal magic elephant. It's a great show that weaves the contemporary with the traditional to embrace the charm of both. It features a shadow puppet show, dancing, singing, and of course, many elephants. It embodies all the qualities of the true Thai spirit: fun-loving, elegant, mysterious, and magical. All of the delights you've experienced of Thai culture are here in this show. Along with the Fantasia show, another must-see around here is PP Island. From Phuket, you can rent a boat or take a ferry to the famous PP Island. It's one of those places that you've already seen without realizing it. It's been the location for many famous or unknown films and at least a hundred TV ads. It's really like a forgotten and forsaken little piece of land that looks reserved for the lucky and blessed among us. Everything looks so preternaturally untouched that you don't have the heart to spoil it. Inside that cave is where local people go and climb very high through bamboo ladders to collect bird nests. Which is worth like gold in the market. And this is the famous Maya Beach, where the Hollywood blockbuster The Beach was shot. A dream place for carefree lifestyle. From Phuket, we head a little bit north to the less crowded Penang Province. Here, another island, the location of yet another famous Hollywood film, has been developed into a tourist attraction. The movie was *The Man with the Golden Gun*, and the island is now referred to as the James Bond Island. Before getting there, we have to take a boat and navigate through a mangrove jungle. It is very weird experience. There are waterways through the jungle, but a stranger could easily get lost in this water maze. The 
mountains or islands in the distance remind me of the mountains we have in southwest China around Guilin City. But this is sea cast topography, sculpted limestone. So we're here at the James Bond Island, where people made the famous movie, and it's so different from the PP Island we just visited. The island is actually part of the All Panna National Park. The limestone formations here are what the movie makers used to create a grotesque and slightly otherworld atmosphere for the movie. It doesn't matter much whether you are a James Bond fan. It's a great excuse to visit a lovely island. On our way back, we visit an interesting village. It's called Panyi. And has houses sitting on stilts above the water. But the unique thing about Panyi is that here in this world, made up largely of Buddhist belief, the people of Panyi are Muslim. No dogs or pigs are allowed here. Clustered along the small port road. Are flower bedecked restaurants, which have sprung up to meet the increasing number of tourists. Most of the people here make a living with fishing, but now selling seaside souvenirs also makes up part of their day. However, few appear to be very eager salespeople. The story goes that about 200 years ago, the ancestors of these people came from Java Island in Indonesia, bringing their Muslim belief with them. In the very beginning, there were only three families on three boats. Now there are 270 families and a population of 1,200 people. On my last stop, I went to visit a sea turtle preservation center in Panga Province. The increasing numbers of tourists have greatly disturbed the sea turtles' natural environment, and efforts are being made to halt the decline of the number of sea turtles. The sea turtle preservation center is managed by the Royal Navy. Staff bring the sea turtle eggs from the distant islands. And then hatch them and feed the baby turtles until they're able to return to the sea. In this way, they're restocking the sea turtle population. The amazing thing is that the little turtles are instinctually able to find their way back through this vast ocean to the island where they began. To fall in love with Thailand, it's a place with rich natural and cultural abundance, and people here remain humble and courteous in front of nature. After the little sea turtle got three months old, people send them back to the sea. After all, this is Thailand, a land of freedom. Thank you for watching Travel Out and returning. Goodbye. <laughs>